A flash of light appears in the sky dotted with dark clouds, lightning that strikes everything in a chaotic row. Dozens of dragons, weakened, dead and unconscious, begin to fall from the sky like an unexpected rain. They fall close to the last fortress of humanity, located in the gloomy city. The old man watching this, who stands on the fortress, says that even the almighty dragon has died. Next to the old man, a portal appears from where the timekeeper, Otto, a young dark-haired man, comes out. The ATO says that their world cannot be safe. He is ready to burn his whole body and soul with the help of the time dragon to open the way to the past for the old man. The ATO asks the elder not to lose hope and give the new generation the opportunity to exist, to live. The young man sincerely believes that with the wisdom of an elder, it is possible to change the future in a better direction. The old man says that he is one of those who knows the secrets of time better than anyone, always watching this place where they live. They all belong to this world and time. None of them can leave this world. The elder strikes the floor with his staff, forming golden gusts of wind around the fortress. Books containing a lot of knowledge are flying in those gusts of wind. The old man is drawn to one book with a golden cover and a dragon. He says that let the one who does not belong to their world, their time, rewrite the fate of humanity. Golden runes are formed in the sky, which are absorbed by a dark creature that looks like a snake. It says that weak people are fighting a useless struggle, which makes them more pathetic in the eyes of the strongest. This being turns out to be a forbidden god. He continues to say that all the pitiful hopes of these people will be swallowed up by despair. They will get stuck in it like in a swamp. The old man tells Otto that the forbidden god wants to destroy him, because he is wrapped in black tentacles. The creature believes that people have let centuries fall into ruins and with this sad hope, they turn into dust. The elder proudly raises his head and says that even if they are only dust, they will die as heroes, whom they will remember, and the forbidden god will see their last rage. The people below raise their heads and look straight at the fortress, realizing that the holy elder is conducting a ritual of sacrifice. He says that their age is coming to an end and soon they will all perish. The saint appeals to the faithful warriors, urging them to join the sacrifice to the great fireworks of the Day of Judgment. Wars follow him and say they will die without regrets in the name of a bright future. They, people from antiquity, bring a gift to the future. It will travel through the Milky Way and will make a journey into the distant past to sow the seeds of hope for the future of humanity and for its salvation. This will be called the Generation of the Ancient Wasteland, where animals and dangerous monsters are rampant. This generation will have animal tamers who fight alongside them against monsters, extracting the best resources necessary for survival. Outside the shelter, many dangerous bloodthirsty monsters will be waiting for them, where death is their eternal companion and waits at every step. The main base of Backlight has been standing on the dangerous territory of the Wasteland for several hundred years. The current owner of the base is an extremely strong master who created a special camp and a method of training new tamers, which significantly reduced the mortality rate among civilians. His training methodology is the key to ensuring that the base exists for hundreds of years. Inside the castle, the black light of a young man with dark blue hair stands in one of the numerous alleys. His attention was attracted by a notice hanging on the board, where it is written that there is no place for idlers in the Blaylight training camp. Those people whose animals laid eggs and none of them hatched will be sent to the collection team. If someone is against it, expressing their dissatisfaction and expressing objections, they will be killed immediately for disobedience and violation of the order. The guy is holding an egg in his hands, which just didn't hatch. He sits down on the barrel and sighs heavily, because he doesn't understand how it happened. The fact that his egg did not hatch actually puts an end to his future, because he will not be able to earn money and provide for himself and his sister, and besides, they are orphans. Tomorrow is the last day, and he has no signs of hatching. It's a damn shame. Then he notices a golden sphere flying in the sky and does not have time to understand what it is, because this ray of light falls directly into his head. This is the spell that the elder used. The guy lies unconscious for several minutes. Strange images appear in his head, where there are dragons, a lot of dragons and a rider sitting on the largest and probably dangerous one. The dragons fly away somewhere in the distance and disappear from his field of vision in the unconscious. Someone pulls the young man and asks him to wake up. Opening his eyes, the guy finds himself lying on the ground and realizes that the evening has turned into day. Another man, more likely a guard or a guardsman, pokes a whip into the guy's cheek. This man looks angrily at the young man and asks him if he slept here all night. He says that younger students cannot spend the night in or near the castle. Since the young man does not answer, the man explodes and starts shouting at him and asking what he was doing all night near the castle. The guy does not understand what the patrolman is talking about and tries to remember what happened at night. He remembers dragons, lightning and horsemen. And he also remembers that in this dream he personally tamed a huge red dragon. The guardsman gets even angrier and asks the young man that is he really talking to himself, and he ignores the questions asked to him. 
The man swings his whip and says that this youngster takes him for an idiot and slaps the guy in the face. His cheek turns red and an abrasion forms on it. The guardsman says that he heard that today the guy was going to join the tramps from the village of Atrada and go to the wasteland to finish off food. The man smiles nastily and asks if he will be able to get out of the base and return alive. He swings his whip again, intending to hit the guy, but then another guardsman stops him, noticing that the young man's egg has cracked. The guy joyfully takes the egg in his hands and joyfully shouts that he has succeeded. Three years of suffering and all for good reason, he is proud of himself and that his efforts have borne fruit. The guards are extremely surprised that this garbage really happened and they ask him for forgiveness, saying that there was a huge misunderstanding. The young man's name is Su Huang. He stands and holds an egg in his hands, looking at the guardsman with dislike. He says that he will definitely inform the head teacher that Su Huang has successfully completed an internship and has become a master. He is confident that Su Hang will quickly reach new heights in the future. A statuesque tall woman with brown hair and in uniform appears in front of them. She turns out to be the main mentor of the Blacklight Tower, Lu Yu. She says that it is not worth reporting that Su Huan has completed an internship because she saw everything with her own eyes. The woman approaches the young man and with a smile tells Tom that now he will be able to interact with his egg. Yuna decides to try to cooperate and leans her forehead against him, saying that he has been waiting so long for his little friend to hatch and from the egg he is answered with a squeak. Hearing this, the guy smiles happily and says that he was answered. Liu Yu says it's wonderful. More and more young animal tamers are appearing in black light, and this cannot but please. The mentor's sweet smile is replaced by a serious expression, because she noticed an abrasion on the guy's cheek. She asks him where it comes from and the young man without a twinge of conscience points his finger at the guardsman who hit him with a whip. Liu Yu asks the guardsman about how he dared to hit the master. She says she will reward him with 20 lashes, and after that she will send him to the wasteland to get food, that's where he will receive his punishment. The guardsman falls on his knees in front of the mentor and begs Su Heng to spare him, but the young man does not hear him and leaves after Lu Yu. They enter the castle, where they are met by the owner of the base, Zhu Gu. He asks Lu Yu if Su Heng is the first newcomer in this half year and she says that everything is correct. She heard that Su Heng was about to join the search party, but suddenly, his egg began to hatch. That's why she thinks this guy should be rewarded. Zhu Gu turns to Su Heng and says that he is a stubborn young man who was able to pass at the very last moment. The guy has two options. The first, according to how much, his beast in this egg is a scaly lizard. He will be able to give him a piece of dragon freshness that contains high, grade dragon blood, which will speed up the hatching process. After hatching, he will become stronger than other scaly lizards. Besides, there is a small chance that he will be infected with a drop of dragon blood and in the future this will help him become stronger. Second, when the time comes to get a second pet, he will let Su Heng choose one egg from his collection. After listening to the owner of the base, Su Heng says that it is better to have a tit in his hands than a beetle in the sky, so he chooses the first option. Zhu Gu says he will arrange for the dragon scales to be delivered this afternoon. He also says that he hopes that in the future Su Heng will not forget about his kindness and will contribute to Blacklight. And the young man says with a smile that he will not lead. In addition to the castle itself, Blacklight is divided into two zones, internal and external. Rich members of the community live in the inner zone. And there is also a cleaner environment in this zone. The outer zone, on the contrary, is considered bad and dirty. Representatives of the lower classes live in it. Su Heng lives just the same in the outer zone, in a small cozy wooden house. In the house he is met by a girl who immediately slaps him and begins to scold the guy. She says she was worried because he was out all night. This morning, she went to the inner zone to look for a guy there. But she couldn't go in, and she had to wait at the gate all this time. She was very worried. Here their skirmish is interrupted by a knock on the door followed by a young guy who turns to Su Hang and says that the owner of the castle ordered him to get money. And what is necessary for Su Hang's lizard? The messenger asks to keep all this safe and use it rationally. He wishes Han and the girl success in martial arts and in raising animals. After hearing about the beast, the girl hugs Su Hyun and says that their parents would be very happy to know that the guy did everything. No wonder they sold their last house, because her brother will become an important person in society. Su Hang tells his little sister that he will still live in the outer zone. The girl noticing that the messenger guy has not left yet says that it's time for her to get ready for work. She says that baby Han should behave well and not mess up while she is away. Both guys look at each other significantly. The messenger leaves, leaving Han alone with peculiar gifts. He takes the pouch and takes out the dragon scales from it. The golden light coming from the scales hits the guy's head and the guy's eyes roll up. A golden book with a dragon on the cover appears in his mind. There is written information about the scaly lizard, where at the end it is written that an ordinary lizard will become a dragon lizard. The young man comes to himself and exhales. The guy understands that the scaly lizard will turn into a dragon. 
An adult dragon lizard is a top-class species that can easily destroy a small town. And the one he has is a middle-class species a scaly lizard. These are two completely different types. In addition to money and scales, he was given a dragon blood root as a gift, which looks like a brown brown root. The young man wonders if he will be useful to him. A girl who was so talented that she eventually surprised the owner of the castle and became his student. The first animal she bred was a dangerous high-class species. If Su Hang could have raised a lizard dragon, then he would probably have been successful too and could have become a disciple of the castle owner. Having caught fire with this idea, the guy runs to a medical store, where he spends money on the necessary ingredients in order to achieve the goal that he has set for himself. After collecting all the ingredients, he begins the ritual and the golden dragon spirit flies out of the egg. But nothing else happens, because the spirit returns to the egg. The guy does not fully understand whether his experiment was a success and who is now in the egg scaly lizard or dragon lizard. The training ground is illuminated by a glow. The sun is just rising, and dozens of students are already training without sparing themselves. Liu Yu observes the newcomers and notices that some are chatting, and not completely giving themselves to training. One guy tells the other that Su Hyun's egg hasn't even hatched yet, and he hasn't attended training for four days. The other one laughs and replies that he's probably already dead. But the second one tells him that you can't say such things, so they'll just wait until the main mentor deals with him. Then Su Hyun walks into the training ground. The late guy is met by Lu Yu, who immediately begins to tell him off, telling him that he needs to attend training in a general row with everyone and not skip them. The newcomers watch this picture and whisper that a kayak has come to hand. Su Hyun tells his mentor that he had to skip training, but he had a good reason for that. Yu asks what is the reason and it would be better if the reason was really serious. Here Su Heng turns to the animal in his bag and asks him to get out. A cute blue animal with golden horns looks out of the backpack and snorts in greeting to all those who are on the playground. Everyone freezes in mute surprise, because this is not a scaly lizard, but a particularly dangerous species, a dragon lizard. Liu Yu approaches Su Hang and says that they need to go to the owner of the castle, because this case goes beyond the edge. The owner of the castle says that this is really a very dangerous species, and it was from this young man that he hatched first for something. Zhu Gu doesn't understand what the hell this is and who gave him the egg. He orders to immediately inform the bureau, which is responsible for this, and that they find this person and fine him three months' wages. How dare they mix a scaly lizard and a dragon lizard, endangering not only Su Hang, but also other students to create such an egg, almost depriving the future of Hang, which is why the egg hatched so late. As for Su Hang, Zhu Gu says that thanks to his work all these years, the young man has gone through a lot and will get an important experience. First, he received the most ordinary egg of a scaly lizard. And now he has the most dangerous kind of the highest level on his hands, a dragon lizard. And this is a great achievement. And despite all Su Heng's sufferings in the past, Zhu Gu is sure that this is just the beginning, because he is confident that the young man will go far. Su Hyun says he will meet his expectations. Zhu Gu says that he is very happy that they have such a talented and persistent young man in their castle and asks if Su Heng wants to become his disciple. This question puts Liu Yu into a stupor, because she never thought that after that genius by Suzu, Zhu Gu would accept someone else as a disciple. Su Heng answers his question in the affirmative about whether he wants to become his disciple, and even the animal rejoices at such an optimistic attitude of its owner. Zhu Gu informs the young man and the mentor that tonight he will arrange a banquet where there will be tutors and their mentors, who will be unconditionally free. They will celebrate the arrival of the talented tamer and his new disciple Su Heng. The same evening, a huge banquet was arranged, where everyone celebrated until the evening. Su Hang and his sister return home safe and sound, because they were accompanied by the personal guard of the mayor while in the carriage. Su Hang tells his sister that he is now receiving a hundred gold pieces in a month for the maintenance of his pet. My sister says that at this rate they will be able to get drunk and buy their old house, and then Su Hang will pay for her education. She pinches her brother's cheek and proudly says that she is happy for her brother because she would not have been able to earn so much money in three years. Su Heng tells her to go rest. The most striking difference between ordinary creatures and dangerous species is whether they have innate abilities to use magic. The ability to use magic is called magical talent, and talent is a key factor in determining the strength of the beast. The snake dragon lizard, as one of the most dangerous species, naturally has a special predisposition to the use of magic, in addition to the most common evil attack. There are six other skills, namely, dragon dream which is able to quickly restore strength and regenerate injuries that were received in battle. Lower dragon power is characteristic of many lower dragon races, as is dragon power. Dragons also use the power of the earth, which is an extremely destructive technique. Natural power allows you to use the energy of nature, as well as its resources for the use of magic. 
The combination of natural strength and dragon sleep makes the lizard dragon so tenacious that its power increases and it becomes invincible. The last no less important skill is the extremely powerful ability evil, the most powerful technique with destructive power and it is close to the power of dragon's breath. After reading this, Su Heng turns to the dragon and says that he believes that the baby will become a real master of animals. The guy strokes the animal, which is lying on the table, because he fell asleep in a bowl of food. Su Heng notices that the animal has grown almost 1.5 times in one second. They are surprised, because they did not know that dangerous species grow so fast. Early the next morning, Zhu Gu and Su Heng meet in the training room, where the teacher says that Heng's dragon is really very talented. He suggests testing the power in those magical elements and choosing one that Su Heng will focus on more. This study will help to understand what the beast and Su Heng himself are more inclined to and what aspects they need to develop more so that there are no problems in combat that may be associated with insufficient combat training. Zhu Gu says that the element of his beast is evil and shows a ring on his finger with a red stone that begins to emit a burgundy color. Su Heng looks at the decoration with fascination and realizes that it is Zhu Gu's animal talisman. An animal talisman is a thing that allows you to keep a huge beast inside you, where it can rest and recover. After all, the beast will become so big that it will be very difficult to keep it without resorting to certain tricks. Therefore, tamers often use various ornaments in the form of talismans. As mentioned earlier, animals are often very large, and since they also grow quickly, but it is very problematic to keep them under normal conditions. Their growth often interferes with the owners, and the size reduces the passability of the house or room as much as possible. Zhu Gu's beast is the Scarlet Wolf, whose leading element is evil. The wolf is dark red in color. He is huge. His height is 2 minus 3 meters in height. Zhu Gu says that his wolf is a representative of a beast with the element of evil of the second rank, which he does not meet so often with master tamers. He was also his main beast before. And by the way, he is very suitable for training a snake dragon, as they are perfectly combined with each other. Hearing this, Su Heng was very surprised, because it is extremely difficult to believe that these animals are combined. The Scarlet Wolf is the most dangerous species, combining not only purebred breed, but also true animal anger, which is very harmonious in tandem with Su Heng's pet. Zhu Gu asks the young man to put the animal on the floor and confide in him. Su Heng lowers the dragon and he looks at the Scarlet Wolf with fright, because he is bigger, taller and stronger than him. The wolf's eyes are burning red, but the words are lights in the dark. The animal looks at the young man in search of support, but he raises his hands up and says not to rely on him, but to cope with the fear of the wolf himself. Zhu Gu orders the Scarlet Wolf to use the evil breath to show the kid how to do it. The wolf opens its mouth, takes an air and forms a red sphere with a black outline, intending to strike the animal. But Zhu Gu stops him and says that they managed to activate the power of the animal, because a black, purple aura was formed around it. Zhu Gu says that the baby is noisy and smart, and Su Heng watches the baby with a smile, encouraging him. Zhu Gu says that Su Heng's animal has just comprehended the evil element for the first time right now. This is purple smoke, the initial form of the breath of evil thought. The dragon really has a great talent, because already looking at his first steps, you can understand that he has serious potential. Therefore, the husband says that he will no longer need the scarlet wolf and calls back to the ring, which blows the dragon and he exhales with relief. But the joy of the animal did not last long, because Zhu Gu calls the earth platypus, which is a trio formed from the magic of the earth, animal essence and intimidation. Zhu Gu tells them to play with each other too, but the dragon grabs Su Heng's leg, hiding from the beast. Su Heng feels the fear of the animal, so he asks the teacher to stop. Zhu Gu puts his fingers on his chin and thoughtfully says that Su Heng is right, in connection with which the young man exhales with relief. But Zhu Gu says that the youth's rightness was that the platypus is too simple, so he calls another beast, one of the most powerful beasts, the harmony of fire, stone and evil, the dragon, Lava Tyrannosaurus. The Tyrannosaurus is much larger than the two previous beasts. Su Heng asks Zhu Gu if dragons are rare and he replies that yes. The man says that the young man was lucky that the very first dragon hatched, because this is an incredible luck. Without the dragon, Su Heng most likely never got a second egg. Many tamers dream of having a dragon, but not everyone succeeds. Su Hang, after listening to Zhu's words, recalls the grimoire that he came across and understands that the grimoire of the rituals of ancient dragons is a very serious thing. Zhu Gu asks the animal if he is ready to play with the lava Tyrannosaurus, but the dragon is shaking with fear, and the man gives the order to the Tyrannosaurus. The man wants to see how developed the reaction of the dragon Su Hang is. The lava monster lets out another roar, but stronger than the previous one. His roar is like a strong gust of wind, but at the same time exerts terrifying pressure, which is why the young man says that he feels like a tiny boat that is about to capsize from this huge monster. 
The guy puts his hands in a cross, trying to somehow protect himself from this pressure, trying to stand on his feet. But Zhu Gu approaches him from behind and takes him to a safe distance, saying that the young man may get hurt. Zhu Gu points his head at baby Su Hang, who is still standing on his paws, and says that he is holding up well, so the man orders his beast to strengthen the attack. A giant Tyrannosaurus Rex looks at the baby like a predator, and makes another roar, but much stronger than the previous two, and Zhu Gu tells the young man that he wants to see if his dragon can withstand such an attack. The man's eyes open even more in surprise when he sees that the little animal is still standing on its four paws without moving from its place. He is surprised to say that even though the dragon is still very weak, he is still trying to use the lower dragon power against the power of a Tyrannosaurus Rex of the highest level. Su Hang's dragon has a very high level of magical talent, but Zhu Gu does not know if he will be able to break through the terrible terror of the lava Tyrannosaurus. Hearing these words, Su Hang happily lit up, because this means that his baby is strong and cool. Zhu Gu remembers the dragon scales he gave the guy and asks if he used it. Su Hang tells the teacher that he used it immediately after receiving it. The man says that it looks like the dragon has well assimilated the substance that was in the scales. Perhaps, the animal was even able to get some dragon blood, which helped him to increase his talent by as much as two times. The teacher hands the young man a black book with an intricate golden pattern on the cover. Zhu Gu asks the guy to accept his gift, because in this book he has collected methods and problems that will help the guy in the development of his beast. There is also an interesting method in the book that develops the power of reason. The man also asks the young man not to forget about his spiritual training when he trains his dragon. The power of the mind is a personal power that is the most important basis for the training of the beast. Su Heng smiles and sincerely thanks the teacher for such a valuable gift. After leaving the castle, Su Heng was eventually able to buy back his family's old mansion, which his sister had mentioned earlier. People knew that Su Heng had become a master tamer and treated him with due respect. While Su Heng Su King's sister was working, the young man began cleaning the mansion. The young man tried to do everything well, although he could not make the house the way it was in his memories. But there was a feeling of relief in the young man's heart. Before telling Su King the good news, Su Heng decided to go to her place of work, meet her and pick her up to give her such a pleasant surprise, which she repeatedly told her brother about and now her dream has come true. After a few minutes, turning into an alley, Su Heng hears a heart-rending scream that some girl was making, but he realizes that the scream belongs to his sister Su King. The young girl was surrounded by two black dogs that bark growl and intend to attack the girl, who screams in fright and in order to drive away the animals. In front of Su King were three guys, one of whom was the owner of these dogs. One of the guys, grinning nastily, tells King that his dogs just want to play with her and nothing more. The girl waves her hands in an attempt to drive the dogs away from her, because she is very much afraid of them. The three guys are amused by the girl's behavior, in connection with which they begin to laugh at Su King's helpless situation. The guys smile like winners in this life, and tell her that if she joins in this evening and agrees to play with the guys, then their dogs will not play with her. In that case they will take the dogs away from her, but this is only if she agrees to the condition set earlier. Then Su Heng appears from around the corner. An angry young man holds a brick in his hands and tells the guys that then he will play with this brick, since they threaten his sister. He runs towards the guys and swings. But they dodge the blow, so the guy shoots one of the dogs, who then falls dead and bleeds. Su Hang covers his sister with himself, pushing her behind him and tells the three guys that they are street rats who have no understanding of respect for girls. So let them stay away from Su King. He turns to one of the guys and says that if his father owns a plantation, it does not mean that he can do everything. He should still have an understanding of honor. The guy looks in shock at his dog, whose name was Charlie and who fell dead. He gives the order to the second dog Jack to attack Su Hyun and bite out his throat to avenge Charlie. The guy looks fiercely at Su Hyun because he believes that his attack on the dog is unfair. Jack rushes at the guy, who covers his sister, who asks Han to run and leave her, not to put himself in danger. The guy does not have time to react and the dog is a few centimeters away from his face. But the dragon does not allow harm to its owner, jumps out from behind the owner's back and bites into the dog's throat, killing that, tearing off a piece of meat from its neck. Su Heng praises the animal. The guy whose dogs were killed pulls out a knife, like his friends, with the intention of slaughtering Su Heng. But Yuno Sha uses the dragon power and his dragon begins to exude a heavy aura. Friends of that guy say that in front of them is a dragon from an evil element, so they better run, because they can die right here, because even though the animal is small, but the danger is not frail. Then a guard comes around the corner, three men and ask about what is happening in this alley. The guys, noticing the guards, decide that they will be able to blame everything on Su Heian saying that he attacked them and started a fight, unreasonably killing two dogs. One of their guys says he has connections with the police here, so it's a good idea, so he'll just ask them to arrest Su Hai. 
He was already thinking that he would make Han look like a complete idiot when he was in a prison cell. And after he got rid of him, he would be able to meet Su King because her annoying brother would not bother them. They would create a happy couple and spend all the time together. The guard approaches one of the guys, the one who is the owner of the dogs. The guy's name is Ku. The guard puts his hand on his shoulder and asks how he's doing. The young man starts playing and shouts at Su Hang, telling the guard Zheng that Hang is a scoundrel with special cruelty, who beat his dogs for no reason. Therefore, he asks to arrest the guy for violating the order and attacking him and his pets. Zheng tells his partners to detain Su Hang. One of the guards turns to the young man with disdain and says how he dared to touch Mr. Ku's dogs. They tell him to be a good boy and then they won't hurt him by slowly approaching him. Su Hang throws a brick at the feet of the guards. He turns to them and says that it was with this cur peach that he killed Mr. Ku's dogs and if the guard has nothing to do, then let them ask him something. Two guards start shouting at the young man and say that how dare he kill so back, and even in the middle of the street. If he is so beaten off, then he will definitely like it in the cell where he will be placed for having committed an attack. Here the faces of the guards change dramatically. Anger is replaced by surprise, because a dragon looks out from behind Su Hang's shoulder who is angry and extremely dissatisfied with how they treat and address his master. The guards realize that the young man standing in front of them is a tamer, and to prove these words, Su Hang shows a card indicating that he is a disciple of Zhu Gu. Two guards turn to their boss and he also changes his face, remembering the rumors that are going around the city. Recently, rumors have been circulating in the database about the second student of the burgomaster. Is the young man standing in front of them really the same student? The head of the patrolling guard pulls out a pistol, shoots into the air and turns to Kuyi Niao, saying to Tom, how dare he so brazenly and presumptuously arrange this murder. He orders his subordinates to handcuff Ku Zheniao. In case the accused resist, they can use firearms. Ku Zheniao fussily begins to say that this is some kind of mistake. Because he is a victim, and Su Hang is evil premeditated, the young man shouts and says that his father is Ku Dinkwin, who owns the Rock of Plantation No. 5. Ku says that his father has done a huge favor to Zhen Jun in the past, so he has no right to treat him like that. After these words, the guard slaps the guy in the face and tells his subordinates that if he tries to escape, then let him get a few dozen blows with rods. Zhen Junu addresses Su Hang as a gentleman and says that he could not have imagined that Ku would set his dogs on fire. He tells the young man that he is glad that he reacted quickly and gave up. Otherwise you never know what else could have happened if Mr. Su had not fought back. Su Hyun's face is serious and he sarcastically says that the guards appeared at the right time. After seeing the mood of the guy, Jen sweats and smiles awkwardly, saying that if these three guys fall into his hands, he will do everything possible to punish them, but this is if they don't die by peeling off their own skin. Su Hyun says that this arrangement hardly suits him. Whether Ku dies after Zhang or not, Su Heng will still find a way to take revenge on him as soon as he is released. The guard does not have time to answer anything, because the young man turns to Su King and his mood changes. His facial features become softer, and he smiles radiantly at her, saying that everything is fine and they are going home. He holds out his hand and she smiles sweetly and tells him that they are going home. When the Su family leaves, Zhen Junu treats his subordinate and asks them a question about who they think is more dangerous to anger than the plantation owner or the master tamer. His subordinate says that there is nothing to think about, because it is better not to anger the tamer. After all, they are just small people compared to him, and they don't want to die, they want to live a little longer. The boss agrees with the subordinate's answer and hits him on the flight in a fatherly way. Zhen Junu turns to the bound trio and turns to another guard, telling him to look for a carriage for them, and he and Lao Dong will wait for him here. And then they will take these three straight to the incinerator, where the rot will keep them, and then they will be punished. Su King, whom Su Hang brought to their family's purchased estate, is mincing through all the rooms. Her eyes are shining with joy and she says that she could never have thought that they would come back here again. She is like in a dream. Su Hang smiles and tells her not to faint just yet. He takes out a bunch of keys and says it's hers. The young man tells Su King that buying out their old house is just the beginning. It will get better and more. The girl approaches her brother, takes his hands in hers and says that she believes in Su Hyun, and is sure that everything will be fine with them from now on. The girl is incredibly proud of her brother and what he was able to achieve in such a short time, because their lives are getting better and they support each other. Their sweet conversation is interrupted by a knock on the door. Su Hang gets up and walks towards the door. He opens it and there is a man of Fortiminus 50 years old standing behind it. The man says that he is the deputy director of plantation management, Guo. Su King looks out and recognizes this man. She asks him why he came to them. Guo says that he has just received news from the police that Ku Dinkwen's son insulted Mr. Su and his sister. Therefore, he came to make amends and do them a favor. He says that he plans to transfer him to a 30 plantation so that he can plow the land and be an ordinary farmer. 
without any privileges that he had earlier. Wild animals are rampant in this plantation and all sorts of troubles happen from time to time. Gyo thinks that Ku Dinkwen, who at least was a leader, will be able to adapt to this. He asks Su Hyun if he is happy with this arrangement. Han says he is glad that the director will pay attention to this situation. Guo continues and says that he has heard that Su King is the senior agronomist in their plantation system. Therefore, she can be promoted to the position of deputy director in the department of agronomy of their management. Su King is surprised and says that she is not at all suitable for the proposed position. Kyo says that she is definitely suitable, because they are Mr. Su Hang's sister, so there can be no mistake that this position suits her the most, and if she needs something, she can always find go and ask for a favor. The girl, hearing this, happily says that she will be happy to help. Watching this, Su Hang thinks that when people get stronger, they get more and more privileges, that's how it works. Han returns to the house and prepares to eat the dragon. The food he cooked is rice. He asks the animal to eat a little more of this food according to the mentor's recipe. And it is also very useful but for the animal itself, because the more it eats, the faster it will grow and become stronger. The kid is annoyed that he is forced to eat so much. Feed formulas for tamed animals are divided into poor quality, average, good, very good, excellent, wonderful, perfect and perfect. There are eight formulas in total. So many people try to use the last five, because the better the quality, the greater the result. Besides, this recipe is really very important for a young man, as for a student. But Su Hang doesn't understand why the baby didn't like the food according to this recipe right after he tried it. It is likely that it is not so much the food itself as its ingredients. The young man understands that the idea of the wrong ingredients is correct, so he calls for Gris Moir. As soon as lizard dragons hatch, they immediately eat their own shell and then they cannot eat for a long time. As a hybrid of three species, amphibians, dragons and evil creatures, the courtship of dragons, snakes and lizards cannot be uniform because it must be focused on certain aspects. However, at the same time, dragons, snakes, and lizards are quite fastidious in food as they prefer food in the form of living things. Su Heng smiles and turns to the animal, saying that he understood what the problem was, so he will look for a new recipe for the animal. The animal, when he heard these words, beamed happily. Su Heng says that the teacher gives him a lot of money, and therefore he does not need to limit the food of the animal and himself with Su King. Therefore, he will buy good food so that the animal eats more and grows faster. Over the next few days, Su Heng fed his snake dragon lizard according to the recipe from the book Rituals of Ancient Dragons. Su Heng runs up to the shop where the shrimp are caught, which means that they are fresh. He bought fresh meat, fish and other products that the baby liked. The dragon really liked the new recipes, so he ate the food on both cheeks with pleasure. But all this led to a new problem, because in five days of such a regime, Su Heng spent every penny of his money, and the baby grew so much that outwardly he already resembled a full-fledged dragon, just small in size. Although the young man is saddened that there is no money left, he is glad that his dragon has overcome the childhood stage and entered adulthood. If they encounter the dogs again, which took a lot of energy to fight that time, then now his dragon will not have the slightest difficulty. Su Hyun imagines how the kid is preparing to jump on the Sobak, whom they met in the alley. He jumps on them, grabs them with his paws and tears them apart. He says that his animal will be able to kill such a person in a couple of seconds, without much energy consumption on one breath. While the dragon is eating the food prepared by Su Hang, he strokes it and notes that it has quite strong scales. So an ordinary person without a firearm poses no threat. Even if five or three adult and strong-armed men were to encounter a snake dragon, they would be killed in a matter of seconds. Su Heng remembers that the teacher asked to find him in the castle when his dragon enters the adult stage. But it's amazing that only five days have passed since he stopped being a child. It is likely that the recipe from that old book really refers to the level of perfect or even perfect. Therefore, since this is the case, it is very important to be careful and keep it a secret. The young man says that it looks like his dragon will soon have to learn how to use his new skills. It would also be good to stop frequent formula feeding for at least 10 days for sure. Ten days later, Su Heng comes to the castle. He knocks on the door where Zhu Gu is supposed to be and is allowed to enter. Zhu Gu says that he hasn't seen Su Heng for a long time and that he is idle. The young man rubs the back of his head and smiles. He will apologize to the teacher, saying that he worked hard on the development of dragons, so he could not attend training often. The guy launches the dragon and says that thanks to the recipe given by Zhu Gu, the dragon has successfully reached the adult stage. The man, seeing the dragon, cries out in surprise, because the dragon reached this stage very quickly. Han says that in 10 days is not as fast as it seems. Zhu Gu slaps Su Hang on the back of the head and says that it's just very fast. He says that it took his 8th student by Su a month for her beast to progress from the child stage to the adult stage. He asks directly how fast he still needs. And besides, Bai Su's ice lotus is two levels lower than his snake dragon. 
Su Heng thinks it would be better without such a wild growth rate, because the teacher's reaction is very violent. Zhu Gu says that the young man's dragon apparently has not only outstanding fighting abilities, but also has a unique potential for growth. If he is already an adult dragon, then he is probably already familiar with his new abilities. Now he has the dragon power of the first and second degree. And these are two types of skills, dragon power intimidation, which is related to what aura the dragon emits and the way he looks at the enemy. Dragon power shock and awe increased pressure in the air. And the breath of evil thought also rose to a new level and formed into the flow of evil thought. Zhu Gu looks at the guy with disbelief and listens to what he says. Because how in such a short time the young man was able to develop the skills of the beast to such a high degree, because the rest of it takes a month or even more. The guy smiles and says that it's all thanks to the hard work of the teacher with him. Su Hang thinks it's a good thing that he didn't tell about the master dragon dream, seal of nature and evil attack, which were also developed. Zhu Gu says that he did not doubt the young man. He offers them to go to the training hall to see what he is now capable of and the guy agrees. They come to the burgomaster's private training ground. Zhu Gu tells the guy that he hopes that his snake dragon lizard will show itself in the best way. If this is true, then he will give him the master's personal talisman. He says that Su Heng did a good job and went through many obstacles that he encountered on the way. Therefore, how well the baby will show himself today will depend on whether Su Heng will get a convenient talisman for himself. Hearing these words, Su Heng turns to the baby and asks him not to let him down. Zhu Gu summons a stone armadillo bear and tells Tom to play with a small dragon. The bear is gray in color, and still the body, also including the head, is covered with armor, which looks just like an armadillo. Seeing the bear, the kid and Su Heng were very surprised. The young man asks the teacher how many more animals he has with the element evil. Because every time he trains him, he summons some new beast that is radically different from the previous one. Zhu Gu laughs and says that he is still weak, because he has tamed only 10 to 20 high-class danger animals, and in his opinion, this is not such a great result. He also says that only half of the tamed animals are at the level of a stone bear or a lava tyrannosaurus, but he decides to abandon all other meannesses and tells Su Hyun to prove to him how much he wants this talisman. He asks to show him everything he is capable of, because the time has come to see the results of his labors. The bear stands in a stance, on its hind legs. It emits a strong roar, like a huge gust of wind. Su Hang covers his face, and the dragon is fixed on the floor so as not to budge. Since Su Hang's eyes are closed, he does not immediately notice that the baby uses the dragon's power, which is called a holding barrier, which will prevent the beast and the owner from entering a kind of sphere that separates them from external stimuli. Zhu Gu says that it is not very bad, because his dragon at the growth stage can resist an already fully formed person. He stops the bear, which is preparing for a new attack and gives the right of attack to Su Hyun and the kid, telling him to use evil breath. Inspired, Su Heng turns to the kid and tells him to use the stream of evil thoughts. The dragon inhales air and a small sphere of black and purple color is formed in its mouth. When the kid completely formed a sphere, he released it from his mouth to attack the bear. The sphere reaches the target, but does not cause visible damage, which is why Zhu Gu says that the dragon apparently ate little porridge, because the sphere that he released is just a small ball, which is no more than a tickle for his stone bear. Su Heng grins, because only he understands what he and the baby will do next. He gives the serpent dragon an order to use the stream of evil thoughts the pearl of evil. You after listening to the order, the dragon begins to launch spheres one after another, aiming at the bear's head. At first it seems useless, because he does not cause any damage to him, but after a while a crack forms on the bear's head, and the armor flies off. Zhu Gu, noticing this, says that Su Heng is well done, because he did not even realize that the young man would study the evil breath technique so well and use it in attack. He understands that Han used the accumulation of dark energy and was able to create a real series of shots, as if they were bullets, having also built a series of very good attacks. Embarrassed by the praise, Su Heng says that the teacher is overpraising him. He thinks that there is actually another pearl of evil technique that attacks with incredibly high accuracy, and therefore the enemy cannot dodge, but only attacks of this level will still not be able to penetrate the armor of the stone bear. Zhu Gu says he is pleased with the progress the young man has made, because his attacks have become stronger and clearer. He gives him a golden ring. The talisman ring now belongs to the young man. Although it cannot accommodate as many animals as his, it can easily accommodate five. There is enough space in the ring to accommodate five animals, and if Su Heng's tamed animals are a little crowded, then even ten can be accommodated. Su Heng thanks the teacher, but he says it's too early to be happy. Even though he has not developed his technique and magic control well, his combat experience is still at zero. Participating in real battles is the best way to increase this experience, so he decided to send Su Heng to the northern section of their defense, where there will be a great opportunity to fight with dangerous types of animals. In three days, Su Heng should report to the military headquarters and inform 
and already there on the spot someone will give him an appointment. Behind the high walls of Blawlight there are four defensive lines that guard the entire base. Each defensive line consists of military camps, as well as many animal tamers, together with specially trained military personnel with firearms. The southern and northern borders are the most dangerous. There are battles with dangerous species almost every day. Most of the materials in the city related to dangerous types of animals were also the results of hunting four main frontiers. Within three days, Su Heng collected his advance for the next month of benefits for tamers in the amount of as much as 250,000 yuan. The young man spent most of this amount on buying ingredients for food for his dragon, as well as three whole days preparing these ingredients into formulas in order to preserve the food for as long as possible. By agreement with the military headquarters of the outer fortress, Su Heng went to the northern frontier, post 7, as a member of the team. Four defensive lines on the territory of the base were created largely for plantations located in wild places. In the end, the area of land from which you can harvest is quite limited, and the total harvest of seven plantations inside the gathering cannot meet the needs of 50-60,000 people who live in the city. Working on plantations outside the city is second only to joining search teams in terms of the degree of danger, and this is also one of the most dangerous industries that the residents of the base are trying to avoid. If Su Hang's memory does not change, Ku Dinkwen, the head of Plantations No. 5, was assigned to Plantation No. 30, which was located in the security zone of the northern line of defense. Su Hang and other people drive up to the base, to the seventh observation point. The person who drove the young man wishes him good luck, and he himself must return and report that he delivered the young man to the place. The people at the base, I look out and look at Su Hai. The man in the car says that the chief of staff himself really brought this newcomer here. The other answers him that this kid is a master tamer. This can be understood by the way he is dressed and wearing his bag, which is stuffed to the brim with rations for tamed animals. They decide to go down and help the young man with the luggage. They run up to the guy and shout to him that they will carry his things, because how can Mr. Sue do it on his own when they are there? The guy doesn't understand what's going on. The older man introduces himself and says that his name is Sio Huang and they are helping him, because now the safety of the seventh point depends only on Su Hang. Su Heng says that unnecessary formality is not necessary, because Sio Huang is older than him and he will call him Huang Ji. The man, hearing this, lets out a stingy male tear and says that for the first time he meets a non-pompous master tamer. He calls his wards to help Mr. Su too, and after that they arranged a feast for him. There are only 29 guard posts on the northern border, and Su Heng has to report on the situation at the 7th guard post. More than 10 years ago, it was blown to pieces by the most dangerous species flying by, which did not leave a single survivor at the guard post. Since then, the entire modern guard post no. 7 has been rebuilt on the ruins. This will be the place where Su Heng will break into his sad battle and start collecting combat experience. The young man is sitting at one of the tables in the dining room and Huan comes up to him, bringing a dish of a wine. He says that although they do not have special conditions for cooking delicious food, but Aben's cooking is simply excellent. Su Heng asks Huang Ji to call him by his first name, not by his name. They tell the man that they are comrades in arms, so it will be too strange if they address him as Mr. Su. Huang says that the master tamer is a very important person, so he will also call him Su Ji. The men who helped with unloading the luggage sit down at the table with them. Su Heng says that if he calls him Su Ji, then he will call Huang Ji and this is unconditional. He asks the men sitting at the table how often they have dangerous types of animals here. He is answered by a young man with a bandana on his head. Blondin says that here they are still somewhere on the middle line. So the pressure on the defense, of course, is less than at the more remote posts. But still there are a lot of fish that can slip through the net. He asks Su Hyun to turn around and shows him a bunch of dangerous animals that they have caught in the last few days. In the middle and at the end of each month, a military officer with a team from the city comes here, who is responsible for transporting rare resources and counting rewards. Su Heng praises them and says that it is really difficult without a tamed beast, so it is worthy of praise. Another of the group asks Su Hyun what his beast can do and asks him to show it. Huang begins to rule his ward, but Su Heng fulfills his request and summons the snake dragon. The guys look at the baby in surprise and say that this is the most dangerous kind. The kid lands next to Han, and the men are surprised, because they understand that the first tamed beast Suji is the most dangerous kind. It's just awesome. The kid uses shock and awe to attack the men, but Han gives him a slap on the back of the head and says that you can't attack your colleagues. The baby does not have any mothers. The guy that the dragon tried to attack says that everything is fine with him, and the beast is really strong, which shows the splendor of Suji as a master. The blonde laughs at his friend and says that he almost peed in his pants, but says that everything is fine. 
After that, Su Heng got to know all his five brothers at the post. After a short recovery, Su Heng, on the advice of the mentor, began to train the power of the mind using the spiritual hammer. The method that his mentor advised him is called crystal mind and consists of three stages. The first stage is to remove all distractions and create a crystal environment for meditation around himself, meditating as if on a giant crystal. The second stage is working with a specific breathing rhythm, when the mind gradually becomes one with the meditative environment. The third stage is the last stage, which is based on the spiritual hammer method. With Su Hyun's current progress, it would only take him half a year to reach a crystal clear mind, just as the teacher had said in general. Such a monster as Sister Bai Su, who in just a month or so perfected her mind to crystal purity. Bai Su must be really bright, like the moon that is currently hanging above him in the sky. The guy looks up and notices an alarm signal from the tower. He is met by Huang Zia, who says that it's time to get down to business because something terrible has happened. Su Haiyan is given binoculars to look at the approaching threat. The young man says that this is a dangerous species of the second rank. A club-footed beetle, instead of paws it has armored claws, sickles that can easily split any cobblestone. Huang Ji says that the scythe beetle is the most common type of animal in their sector, although these insects multiply rapidly. Killing four minus five at once is not a problem. Wang Zio gives the order for everyone to prepare for battle. He says that he and Lao Yu will be at the machine gun position of the watchtower. A Wen will take the forward sniper position on the northwest side. Zio Hu and Zio Lu will guard the fifth and sixth shootings on the first level. Wang says they need to get together and help Su Ji finish off those stinky bugs. The ability of a dangerous kind is perception. Reception, the imposition of armor. Men shoot bullets that can penetrate the armor of these beetles. Juan says they killed a thousand at once. Only the main thing to remember is that they do not need to take their heads off. Otherwise they will not get any military awards for this. The scythe beetle's best skill is armor overlay. It is not particularly effective, but significantly weakens the effect of conventional bullets. By continuously firing a machine gun, you can create a perfect opportunity to get straight to the target. Su Heng watches his brothers and how they fight and understands that this is the battlefield of the northern frontier. Although they are not master tamers, but their understanding of the situation and skill, honed in multiple fights, is enough to provide all the necessary combat power. They defeat almost all beetles, but one, seeing that his brothers are being killed, runs away. The whole family gets into the car chasing the bug. The guy sits down at the machine gun and starts shooting. He stops firing. Because Su Heng gets out of the car and moves straight at the beetle, and Huang gives an order to his ward to monitor the internal border because everyone there is gilded and they need to be alert. The beetle looks in front of Han and looks at him with fear in his eyes. And the guy in turn says that first they will see what happens to him after the evil attack. He releases the kid, who furiously attacks the beetle, which in turn summons armor to defend against the dragon. The kid easily breaks through this armor and throws the beetle aside. But at the same time Su Heng concludes that the armor really works so well that it still repelled his attack and did not get damaged. The guy orders the snake dragon to use the stream of evil thoughts the pearl of evil. Maulish begins to let the spheres in the direction of the beetle's armor, which is now difficult to give in. Therefore, Su Heng uses shock and awe and orders the baby to tear this insect to shreds. The dragon deals damage to it, but the beetle starts running away again, mincing its paws. The guy says that this is not a very good idea and uses the power of the earth. The baby stops and forms an earthen wave that overtakes the beetle. Sharp stones are formed from the ground, which pierce through the beetle. The men watching this battle come to the conclusion that Su Ji does not need their help and say that they were covered with goosebumps watching this fight, since they do not have tamed animals. This is a very interesting sight for them, especially if they are watching him from a distance of several meters. Having seen such a fight firsthand, they will definitely imprint it in their memory. The next day, Zio Hu tells the others about what he saw with his own eyes. He says that he was most impressed by the use of the power of the earth, because stone spears appeared directly from it, piercing the beetle like a pumpkin. The guy tries to imitate the baby's movements by explaining everything. Huang Zio told Su Heng that he used to think that he, like all those sweaty newcomers, had just decided to get rich, but in fact he turned out to be a real nugget who thinks not only about his own skin, but also about the people around him. Wang Ji is very impressed with the young man and says that he is really incredibly cool. The young man embarrassedly scratches the back of his head and smiles, saying that this is not only his merit. Everyone contributed to the victory that night, so all are great fellows and it is not worth highlighting him specifically against the rest. Their dialogue is interrupted by a young man who calls Huang Xiao and says that someone is coming to them. Su Hang and Huang Ji go to see who is heading towards them. They see a command convoy coming down the road. Juan says this is strange, because usually when recalculating military supplies, the command comes to them only by noon, after they visit each watchtower, 
also including posts. The man does not understand why they arrived today and at this time. A column of armored cars stops near the base and a blonde young man with glasses, a cigarette in his mouth and a bandana comes out of it. This person is the commander-in-chief of the Northern Defensive Line, Lu Ling. Huang Xiao greets him and bows. Lu Ling tells Huang Ji that they have not seen each other for so many years, and he still does not change, does not age. Huang lets out a stingy tear, which surprises Lu Ling. Wang Ji says he didn't even think about Ling remembering his name, so he is very flattered by this fact. Thong says that the commander-in-chief has come such a hard way to work with them and this fact also affects Huang Xiao and he begins to cry more actively. Lu Ling shrugs it off and says that it's a 10-minute drive from the barrier to here, or even less, so it's not worth attaching such great importance to the journey done. Lu Ling approaches Su Hang and asks how he is doing here. Are he used to being in these conditions? Su Hang, panicking, says that he needs to report something to the commander-in-chief but then abruptly turns around and says that he got to know all his comrades in the service and adapted well to life here. Adaptation took place without much difficulty. Lu Ling smiles and pats the guy on the head, telling him that there is no need to talk to him so officially because he wants to become his friend. He says that Zhu Gu has already mentioned a couple of times that he took a new talented student and apparently that his owl was really truthful. Ling says that he heard the chief of staff say that the young man did not see him when he came to the headquarters and they just missed each other at their last meeting because Su Hang went to exterminate stupid monsters. But Lu Ling decided to come again to see the guy first and, and get to know him. The eternal inhabitants of the post are extremely surprised by this fact, because it means that the commander-in-chief came to their tiny post, for the sake of Su Hian, to personally tell him and say hello to him. They thought that Su Ji was an ordinary master, but they did not know that he was a personal disciple of their deeply respected mayor. They were extremely lucky that this youngster did not cause any trouble during all this time. Lu Ling turns to Huang Xiao asking why he is standing like a pillar and does not let it down after fighting for the last half a month on the post. He demands a report and asks them to leave and not interfere with his dialogue with the young man. Lu Ling asks Su Heng to summon his snake dragon because the mentor specifically instructed him to come and monitor the development of the guy so that he could report everything to Zhu Gu later. When the guy hears about the mentor, he is surprised, because he was sure that he forgot about him as soon as he left the city, but it turns out that he has already sent his spy who is false to follow him. Su Heng calls the baby and then flies out of the ring and sits down next to his master. Lu Ling is surprised when he sees the animal, because the guy's dragon hatched a little less than a month ago and has already grown to such a size. Han pretends to be a fool and says that his dragon has grown a lot since he learned to use dragon magic and the guy asks what exactly is wrong. Why was Ling so surprised? Ling sweating says that everything is fine and everything is fine, and his beast also grew even more at one time. Changing his face, Lu Ling says that his mentor asked him to find out how well he had honed his dragon's fighting skills. The man says that he also has his own tame dragon, so he will let him check out the boy's dragon. He prizes a horned earth dragon, which, according to him, should have fun with the baby. A horned earth dragon is a dangerous species with two bloodlines, snake and dragon, with the same racial rank as the snake dragon. He was personally bred by Lu Ling to the level of a fully valuable dangerous species. Due to his thick skin and horns, he is able to withstand second-rank beasts at the end of his growth for a short period of time. This dragon is one of the most important advantages of Lu Ling. He is very proud of it. The horned earth dragon is bigger than all the beasts they've seen before. There are sharp spikes on its muzzle and back. He scares the baby just by his appearance and he tearfully looks at his master. Su Heng turns to Lu Ling and asks that his dragon be gentle with the baby, otherwise he will simply trample him. Ling says that his dragon knows the measure and will not harm the baby. Hearing this, the young man says that in this case they are ready. Lu Ling turns to the horned dragon and says that it looks like the snake baby dragon hasn't woken up yet, so he suggests waking him up using a small earthquake. The horn begins to stomp, and the earth is shaking from his trampling. Ling levitates, which surprises the guy. Levitation is the advantage of being able to control spiritual power after training mind power. But Su Heng will think about this later. He orders the kid to use the evil attack and dodge the blows. The kid uses the attack, grabs Su Hyun on his shoulders and rises into the air. The kid with his master in his paws dodges the attacks of the horned dragon. Han tells Dragon Chick to use the pearl of evil just this horned dragon. The kid carries his master to a safe distance and begins to attack, but does not cause any damage. Su Hang understands that counting on his kid to defeat the horned dragon is just a pipe dream so far, so even losing beautifully would be at least cool. All he can do is show the results of the dragon's development, which he has achieved all the time, and also not to disappoint the teacher, who is so worried, being 10 kilometers away from him. The young man tells his dragon that his advantage over the horned one is, first of all, speed, so he can surround him with pearls of evil. 
The kid follows the advice of his master and surrounds his opponent, and then stabs the horned dragon in the back, where a bruise is still formed. Su Heng tells the dragon to use the power of the earth to restore the spent strength and energy, and then use the Su dragon, the dance of the earth. The kid attacks the horned dragon, but he stomps his paw again and with a shock wave throws the snake dragon against the wall, into which he crashes. Su Heng immediately runs to the baby. Lu Ling praises the young man and says that he had a good tactic. But still the strength of the horned earth dragon is already at level 9, so his earth dance is nothing to him, but like a weak cat. Su Heng looks at Ling and says with annoyance that he himself asked to use everything possible so as not to steal the teacher. Ling lets down and says that he didn't want to offend the guy, he just understands what snake dragons, lizards are capable of, because he had encountered them earlier. He praises the guy and says that Zhu Gu will be pleased with him. Lu Ling puts his arm around the young man's shoulder and leads him inside the fortress. He says that Su Heng's dragon is developing much faster than his. Their teacher really took a very talented young guy as a student. In turn, the horned earth dragon repeats after its owner and strokes the baby, encouraging him, because he coped with the task set before him perfectly. Soon after the departure of the commander-in-chief, winter came, snow fell in large flakes from the sky. It was wildly cold at the guard post, because the walls are not as high and strong as at their base, which is able to shelter from the winter cold. Men sleep in sleeping places, which do not warm them very much, although winter has just begun, and it is already so cold. The blonde is so cold that he is shaking, and his teeth are beating against each other. His friend tells him to become a master tamer, because Su Heng has a spiritual cover and, for example, he is warm. Then the alarm starts sounding and everyone is blown up from their sleeping places. Juan runs into the room and says that the guard post no. Three in the server part called them and reported that a group of dangerous species had attacked plant no. 25. He says that Sayo Hu and Suhi together with him will now go on a call from the third post, and the rest will guard the house. According to Captain Lee, the situation is really very serious now, since almost the entire 25th plantation has been completely captured. More than 20 individuals of a dangerous species, and not about five less dangerous ones have penetrated into its territory. All the plant workers are now locked in the staff quarters and they have about a dozen broken guns with which they somehow fight back. But it's only a matter of time before the links get inside. Wang Xiao says that they are going to gather support for all the posts of patrol base No. 3 in No. 4 in the northern sector, as well as the main forces that will almost completely come out to protect the plantation. The collection should be completed by 4 a.m., since the attack will begin exactly at this time. The time shows 3.40 and Huang tells Xiao who to drive faster. On the radio, Huang Ji says that he, Su Hen and Xiao who arrived at the appointed place, at the appointed time. The radio reports that they are conducting reconnaissance. The beast broke through the sixth gate on the northwest side. Now they are in the grain area, where they attack employees. They tear pieces of meat from dead bodies. All the survivors were moved to the staff quarters and are now defending themselves, strengthening the protection. All fighting squads, all vehicles are transformed into the shape of a spear. Two armored vehicles will be used as sources of spears, directly attacking and opening fire on the plantation dormitory building. Those who arrive to help are told to be careful. The dangerous species that invaded here are poisonous wolves, which are resistant to attacks and can easily bite off their heads, so you need to kill them urgently and release those survivors who remain. Arriving tanks, about a dozen, open fire on the wolves who ran out. Some of them are going to be killed by a wolf, but this is not the end, because the alpha starts howling and calls for more wolves, and now there are almost more than a few dozen of them, and they run straight to tanks and armored vehicles. Su Heng approaches Zio Hu, who is driving, and says that something is wrong, so he asks him to pull back. Huang asks Su Ji if he is okay. The young man says he heard a wild howl, so he became alert. He says he has heard from teacher Zhu Gu that a dangerous species like the venomous wolf can evolve into the ultimate alpha wolf form. Sitting in the car, they see that the wolves are running straight at them and Su Heng says that they must be guided by the leader, so it's not surprising that so many individuals broke through the fortification. The poisonous wolf, sitting on a hill, watches the help that has arrived and uses his skill poisonous fog, plunging everything into black smog. The walkie-talkies say that you need to turn on the infrared sight, also so that everyone is on the alert and watch their comrades so as not to lose them in the fog. Su Heng says that everything is not so simple and asks Xiao Hu to back up and drive even further. Wang Xiao turns his head to the side and sees a wolf attacking one of the armored vehicles, tearing off its roof. This car is surrounded by four wolves, one of which is much larger than the others. The guy sitting in this car is very scared, because he is in a terrible situation, in a hopeless one. Su Ji says that this wolf is just a shadow wolf companion. The special ability of the leader of the poisonous wolves is a shadow double, which suggests that there is another leader who is approaching their car. 
The wolf crashes into the car at full speed from Juan's side and breaks the glass, but does not turn over. Juan still holds the machine gun in his hands and opens fire on the wolf on the move. The man says that it's hard for him, because he can't even break through the armor for a little bit. The wolf stops. He lets the car go ahead and jumps on it, demolishing the roof. The wolf's mouth turns out to be a few centimeters from Suji, but a baby appears who protects his tamer. The serpent dragon uses shock and awe, and without hesitating for a second, the flow of evil thoughts, namely, the pearl of evil. He uses a quick series of attacks, aiming at the wolf's head. His attacks benefit and he kills the wolf. Su Hang on the radio asks to cease fire to avoid accidental casualties and injuries. He says that he will take care of the leader of the poisonous wolves on his own, so he asks to trust him. The man who initially coordinated those who arrived to help watches the guy through a binocle and says that it is not surprising that the young man is so eager, because he is a student of Mayor Zhu Gu himself. This youngster is very diligent, even though he is still at the training stage. The man demands that everyone cease fire to support military vehicle No. 10 in the northern sector, where Su Ji, Huang Ji and Xiao Hu are located. He says that the leader of the poisonous wolves is now completely on Mr. Su. They will take care of the other little things, so as not to interfere with Su Hang to fight. Su Hang and the baby get out of the wrecked car. Everyone got out of their cars, but visibility is extremely low, because the poisonous fog covered the entire perimeter. Wang Xiao calls Su Ji and points his finger at a huge wolf that is attacking another car, where there is still someone left. The guy from that car screams and asks for help. Su Hang runs towards them and shouts to the wolf to get away from the guy. He orders the kid to use an evil attack. The dragon picks up speed and rushes straight at the wolf, which falls. The guy who asked for help smiles radiantly and thanks Hand for saving him, because he thought he was going to die already. Su Hang shouts at him to run, but the guy does not understand why the hyen standing in front of him panics and screams. But the wolf gets up on its paws and pierces the chest of this young man through. Su Hang gets angry and shouts at the kid to use the earth dance. The dragon descends to the ground, stomps and roars, but the wolf uses the sinister strike retaliatory attack and dodges the snake dragon's attack. Su Ji says this is a great opportunity to attack and tells his comrades to open fire on the wolf. The wolf's barrier does not let bullets pass, so the shelling turned out to be useless, but the kid attacks the wolf again, bites into his neck. Han tells his beast to use shock and awe. The kid takes off into the air and uses his skill, moving towards the wolf. The kid kills the wolf and he falls dead. Wang Zio asks Su Heng how everything is and is he okay. The drooping guy says that everything is fine with him, he was just thinking. Wang says that in the past, master tamers were not usually involved in invasions of this scale. But if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for Su Heng, the losses would have been much more, at least twice. Wang Zio says that Su Ji saved them, so he doesn't need to be upset. Wang Ji raises his hands and shows the young man the scar. He tells him that this scar has been with him since he first fought to save the plantation. His first battle was much more terrifying than today's. More than 50 people were killed and wounded in that battle. The armored car was smashed to scrap by a huge steel gorilla in mature form, which turned the entire crew into mush. In the end, it was Mr. Cow, the then commander-in-chief of the Northern Front, who personally killed the beast and ended that bloody battle. Wang Zio takes out a flask and hands it to the young man, telling him to drink. A man says that death is inevitable. They are all people, they live here like floating leaves, without roots and support. Therefore, no one can guarantee that today they will fall asleep, and tomorrow they will wake up and see the sun. The battle to save the plantation was the first time Su Heng faced death face to face. He turned out to be a real fighter who, after this nightmare, finally realized that only constant effort can help save himself and protect others in this chaotic world.